to you, Mr. Bauman, please. Yes, thank you very much, Stefan Kegebein. I'm very pleased to open this uh, very good uh, uh, information session. And uh, welcome, Tabriz Amayev. We've, I think, not yet met in person, but uh, I think it's high time to do so. And we all understand that this topic of uh, renewable energy development in Azerbaijan is a very hot topic. And uh, I, I, I say this not only with regard to the overall development worldwide or to um, the uh, internal market. We all know that the energy price in Azerbaijan itself is quite cheap, it's quite low. Um, and the more there is the question, of course, how much uh, this renewable uh, energy um, development could serve to secure Azerbaijan's role as a energy exporter. I think this is um, uh, the most important question if we come across the topic of hydrogen energy and the potential we see in Azerbaijan and then we have an eye on the infrastructure with the southern gas uh, pipeline and uh, which is uh, I would say still in a state to be even expanded in the future to get more capacity. So there, there is um, quite a lot of good arguments to position in the future. That would be my topic for 2022 to position Azerbaijan as one of the future uh, partners in hydrogen energy and um, hydrogen export to, to the European industrial markets. Um, I think uh, you have observed uh, the the environment. You have observed the politics. Um, we have already some, let's say, uh, agreements, uh, more or less preliminary agreements. Um, sometimes also more uh, elaborated agreements on hydrogen partnerships. And I think Azerbaijan here is one of the missing links. Um, We have a new government, we have a new federal government, and uh, we uh, see also that uh, the economy minister from the Green Party will put a stronger access, of course, on this development and on these partnerships. And again, I would say uh, it is uh, until now, it is uh, quite underestimated what potential we have here in Azerbaijan. Um, if we even talk about Australia as a hydrogen uh, partner, I think it is uh, even more convincing that Azerbaijan could here also play uh, a very important role. Um, not only because it is close, but also because we can uh, we can um, we can rely on an existing infrastructure. And uh, therefore, I'm very excited about your um, about your uh, presentation, Mr. Amayev, and I'm happy that we have with Aria again. A, um, operative agency, which is um, exclusively uh, dealing with that topic. We will also see uh, the energy minister on the Berlin Energy Change Summit in 2022. So these are all very good um, parameters and very good signs for uh, this partnership. And also I saw in the forum here our energy partner and gas trader Unipa. Also for Unipa, I think this is one of the future topics where we will um, be able to support um, German industries in Azerbaijan and support Azerbaijan with this new perspective for the German market and for German politics. Thank you very much indeed so far. And I hand over to Stefan Kegbein, right? So thank you very much. I had just had a topic with my microphone. Um, and thank, would like to thank you for your uh, introduction, Tobias Baumann. I, I just uh, um, looking out because I guess we left Mr. Amayev. Uh, I hope he is again in the line. Um, I'm here. The, OK, OK, then it was a mis, uh, misunderstanding. Um, I thank you very much for the introduction and from my side as well. Welcome to our um, uh, distinguished speakers and uh, to the participants. So first of all, to Tabriz Amayev, the director of the Azerbaijan Renewable Energy Agency, 
and uh, to Heinrich Gleisner from Notos Energy, a German uh, project developer in the field of renewable energies. Uh, my name is Stefan Kergebein from the German Eastern Business Association, so a Berlin-based private business association with some 400 German companies as members. Some of them are here in the line as well, and we are um, covering uh, a broader scope of countries that we call Eastern Europe, 29 countries, including uh, Central Asia and the Southern Caucasus. And of course, Azerbaijan belongs to this group of our 29 partner countries. So we have a big number of participants today. That is good news and shows that the topic is timely and then the, the interest uh, seems to be uh, high that, has, uh, that, has, uh, that are good news for us. And um, I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Baumann, that we could uh, organize this webinar together, Osterschuss and AHK, so the German Eastern Business Association and AHK in Baku. And you already tipped uh, the hot topics uh, when it comes to renewables, hydrogen and so on and so forth. I do not have to repeat it, just to underline uh, the importance of, of, of the topic. Um, before I hand over the word uh, to Mr. Amayev, I just want to uh, ask you to mute yourself. I guess everybody did it so far. If you don't speak, if you want to speak after the presentation, please unmute yourself and switch on your video so that we can hear and see you. If you have questions during the presentation, please share in the chat board. We will take the questions after the two inputs. And now, without further ado, I would like to hand over the word to uh, Mr. Amayev. Um, I have to update. I have to upgrade your status to uh, a presenter, and then you can start your presentation now. So please, Mr. Amayev, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Baumann, Mr. Uh, Cakebane, for introduction, and thank you for all organizers for arranging this uh, uh, event uh, due to COVID, we are meeting uh, online, but in the future, I believe that we will have uh, such kind of meetings and seminars, webinars, let's say seminars uh, physically. My name is Tabriz Amayev. I am representing state agency for renewable energy sources here among my capacity as a director of the agency. The agency has been uh, established back in September 2020 uh, under the Minister of Energy and the main task in front of the agency is to create business enabling environment uh, for private sector and to facilitate uh, the deployment of renewable energy in the country. So uh, with your permission, I will start with brief presentation and uh, while talking about the renewable energy development in the country, I will, will uh, we would like to show some uh, information uh, visually. That's why uh, we, we have prepared presentation. Um, so, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, again, uh, regarding the development of renewable energy industry in the country, as you know, uh, notwithstanding with the fact that Azerbaijan has been known as an oil and gas country. The country take green growth, green energy as one of the national priority till 2030. And uh, you know that early this year, uh, to be exact, 2nd February of this year, national priorities uh, of the social uh, economic development for, for the social economic development of the country till 2030 uh, have been determined, have been uh, accepted, and uh, among these national priorities, the fifth one is clean environment and country of green growth. And overall, these all uh, national priorities are in line with UN uh, Sustainable Development Goals. And within this uh, national priority, we have two direction, and these two uh, have, uh, in, uh, how can I say, uh, bilateral impact on each uh, other as a uh, high quality ecological environment as well as green energy zone. So as I said, irrespective of the fact that Azerbaijan has uh, ample hydrocarbon reserves and resources, but the country take uh, to another direction. Of course, uh, we know that oil and gas industry is backbone of our economy to some extent, but a new direction, which is in line with climate change uh, goals and challenge, technological trend, etc. So green energy is a part of our top agenda for uh, 2030. 
In addition to that, uh, by 2030, the country has another target in terms of renewable energy to achieve 30 percent of installed capacity of uh, electric installed capacity. Uh, and nowadays the capacity is 17 uh, percent and uh, to increase this one from 17 to 30 percent. And uh, in addition to that, you know that in the past we had uh, NDC uh, regarding the uh, reduction of the greenhouse gas emission uh, by 2030 uh, regarding 35% now uh, on the sidelines of uh, COP event, uh, Azerbaijan has extended its commitment in that regard. Now we have a commitment to reduce greenhouse gas emission uh, by 40% until 2050. In addition to that, you know that liberated areas has been determined as net zero zone, uh, net, uh, sorry, zero emission zone uh, by 2050. So, uh, in order to deploy renewable energy potential of the country, utilize this potential, uh, uh, let's say, on the smart way, uh, the Minister of Energy uh, has been working in different uh, in uh, uh, different disciplines, uh, and uh, the main target is to use the potential uh, and to utilize the potential uh, and to increase the share of renewable energy in uh, in energy mix. Uh, regarding the potential, uh, the onshore renewable energy potential of the country is around twenty. 7 gigawatt, which is four times higher uh, than our current installed capacity. The main one, almost 99% uh, is wind and solar, and 90% uh, is solar one. But we don't add here floating uh, solar PV potential, which is around one gigawatt. And in addition to that, we have very good uh, wind quality that could be used for wind, uh, offshore wind energy uh projects and uh, according to the initial estimation uh, uh offshore wind potential is around 120 157 gigawatt if we uh, just uh, make it uh, if we provide breakdown of this one 35 gigawatt of uh, this potential is mainly uh shallow water one and uh, rest one 122 uh, for uh, deep water uh, areas. And uh, this is overall snapshot of our current uh, renewable en uh, electricity market and uh, current share is 17 percent. And as I said, uh, the target is to increase this 17 uh, percent to 30 percent by 2030. And in order to uh, Allocate the project within this uh, within this decade and uh, without significant impact on grid, uh, with the involvement of consultant company, uh, special uh, capacities uh, have been determined for different time horizon. And uh, you know that by 2025, uh, around 100 megawatt uh, is uh, megawatt projects are expected to be online, mainly sort of solar and wind one. In addition to that, beyond 2026, around six megawatt uh, uh, project could be implemented, could be realized in order to reach 30 percent target and uh, have smooth integration of renewable energy produ uh, production into the grid. And you know, uh, nowadays the main ma uh, major part of high, uh, renewable energy. Uh, installed capacity is hydro one, and uh, we can add here some wind one and solar one as well, as well as we have one waste to energy plan, uh, which is uh, located in Baku. So in order to achieve uh, the mentioned targets and to uh, facilitate renewable energy deployment in the country, as I said, Minister of Energy with the cooperation, in cooperation with uh, other government units, state bodies, uh, um, uh, has been working in different disciplines regarding the development of regulatory and legal framework, uh, regarding to uh, identification of uh, supporting mechanism that we can attract and we can accelerate the involvement of private sector into these projects, as well as uh, uh, development of rules for auctions, and I'm going to talk about this one. But in addition to this uh, line of works, 
the Minister of Energy has been cooperating with different potential investors, partners, and and nowadays we ha we we can see the results of this cooperation spirit, these uh, efforts. So I'm going to talk about later. So regarding the regulatory and legal framework, and this is. Uh, this year was uh, one of the critical milestones in the, uh, regarding the development of renewable energy industry in the country. Summer, uh, to be exact, in July, uh, low, uh, low on the usage of renewable energy sources uh, uh, in the production of electricity has been adopted. This is the first renewable energy law, and this law will give uh, way to the realization of auctions, application of net metering procedures, uh, and regarding renewable energy zones, uh, identification and allocation of areas for renewable energy projects, etc. So, and ba uh, based on this law, nowadays secondary legislation, secondary documents are being prepared regarding uh, renewable energy uh, rules for renewable energy auctions, net metering procedures certification and uh, information, renewable energy information system. Apart from that, you know, we have already exercised uh, power purchase agreement and connection ag agreement. To some extent, we can, call the, uh, we can say that we have standard templates for this type of main documents um, uh, regarding the uh, uh, PPP projects, uh, implementation of PPP projects in the field of renewable energy. And uh, these standard templates have been uh, used for pilot projects, that are pilot projects for auctions uh, uh, subject to the approval uh, procedures, etc. Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mayer, sorry, some, someone in the line, there are some background noises. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, That's I, why I'm asking. You. Okay, okay. Not, not from my room. Okay, someone else, please mute yourself. Thank you. Okay, please continue. Okay, uh, with your permission, I would like to continue. So, in addition to that, some uh, tax rebates are provided for investors regarding uh, uh, it's about investment promotion certificates, seven years grace period, and different tax rebate. Protection of investment, we have special law regarding the protection of investment. According to the new uh, renewable energy law, uh, renewable energy developers, they have guaranteed offtake, they have guaranteed uh, connection and priority in dispatching, etc. So this is another regulatory framework that uh, nowadays are being applied to uh, involve more private sector into the field. Uh, so, and according to the renewable energy law, we have two directions nowadays to uh, realize renewable energy projects. One is auction, which is the priority way to some extent, but bilateral agreement is not excluded. It depends on the strategic importance of the projects in terms of timing purposes, in terms of location and et cetera, in terms of production and uh, supply perspective. Uh, bilateral agree agreements could be implemented as well and subject to the special circumstances, etc. But, and, but uh, we would like to uh, create competitive market uh, in the field of renewable energy. That's why nowadays we are actively working in uh, actively working with uh, different international organizations in order to uh, realize projects uh, with uh, through auctions. So, uh, before talking about the, some studies regarding the development of documents, other regulatory framework, uh, we have three projects in pipeline nowadays, and you know that we call pilot projects with Aqua Power and Master. Early last year, implementation agreements uh, were signed with Aqua Power and Master. Uh, uh, respectively 240 megawatts for wind power with aqua, aqua power uh, and 230 megawatt solar one with master and this year uh, another implementation agreement has been signed with BP um, uh, for the construction of 240 megawatt uh, 240 megawatt solar power plant 
and nowadays uh, the works are being uh, done, are being run uh, within these implementation agreements and uh, during the uh, execution of, uh, as a result of execution of implementation agreements with Power and Master. Uh, uh, this uh, other uh, project agreements have been uh, signed uh, uh, at the end of the during the end of the last year, uh, late December, uh, implement investment agreement PPA and TCA uh, have been signed with Aqua Power, and April this year, the same type of uh, documents uh, have been signed with Master and. Uh, total capacity of these two projects is 470 megawatts, and um, and within uh, uh, within the implementation agreement uh, of uh, with BP nowadays we are actively working uh, regarding the identification of coordinates of the land, great uh, integration issues, and other types of analysis around the project. As I said, uh, another direction for future projects is auctions and with the support of EBRD nowadays, we are actively working uh, for the, uh, towards the uh, development of uh, auction rules and within this project, not only auction rules are being developed as well as RFP standards, RFP, RFQ documents and other types of uh, documents are being prepared as well as uh, template contracts uh, drafts are being prepared within this project and subject to the approval of auction rules because uh, in order to get uh, them uh, the rules uh, approved uh, we need to go through with some uh, procedures some approval gates and the plan is to uh, start implementation of first auction, uh, first half of the, uh, of the next year. And uh, another direction is about the floating solar PV, as I said, uh, actually. Uh, this is another direction and we would like to assess the potential of our lakes and other water uh, facilities that we can utilize the, in the PV potential of these facilities, of course, subject to uh, solar radiation, irradiation uh, uh, in specific uh, water facilities. Uh, with the support of AD ADB, nowadays uh, we have a special project regarding, uh, which is called Regional Knowledge and Support Technical System Floating Solar Energy Development Project. And within this project, ADB supports us regarding capacity building, assessing the uh, potential of uh, project, as well as 100 uh, kilowatt. Uh, pilot projects, uh, pilot, uh, let's say, power plant uh, is being constructed nowadays in the lake of Berkshire, uh, which is close to our uh, main stadium, as well as nowadays uh, in cooperation with ADB, we are assessing uh, the potential of the implementation of scale-up project around 50 megawatt. It could be in uh, Lake Berkshire, as well as Mingechever water reservoir, and then nowadays uh, we are actively cooperating with ADB in that regard. And in the future, we believe that one auction uh, could be uh, realized uh, uh, for the purpose of using uh, uh, floating solar PV potential of the country. Uh, and another very perspective area is about offshore wind. The country, as I said, has very huge offshore wind potential and we can use this potential, even 10%, 20% of this potential uh, will, be, uh, will bring great results and we can uh, further increase our export capacity and hydrogen production could be considered in that perspective. Uh, and uh, Caspian Sea is among uh, very few uh, water facilities or seas that uh, have good uh, wind quality, stable wind uh, speed and quality that in order to realize, in order to uh, implement offshore wind potential, uh, offshore wind projects. Um, and uh, within uh, the cooperation with uh, IFC, uh, this year, April, this year, uh, a memorandum of understanding uh, has been signed between the Minister of Energy and IFC regarding the uh, 
uh, identification of ways and development of roadmap in order to use uh, offshore wind potential of the country. And within this uh, roadmap, and nowadays uh, we are actively working with IFC and uh, uh, technical consultant company in order to finalize the development of this roadmap. This roadmap will give a clear recommendation about the capacity that we can utilize in order to make projects commercial attractive, which options we have, which in terms of capacity, how we can consider hydrogen production, how we can develop local content in order to make this type of projects more uh, commercial sensitive and uh, within this project one uh, demonstration project uh, analysis regarding the demonstration projects uh, is being done as well that uh, we believe that this demonstration project and the, the results of desktop research will give a uh, clear uh, way about the potential of this industry a potential of uh, how to use their renewable energy so, uh, as I said, uh, and in addition to the offshore wind development of offshore uh, wind roadmap, uh, nowadays Minister of Energy, uh, Minister of Energy uh, has been inviting, let's say, uh, potential investors. And nowadays we have special working group, internal working group that we are in close. Uh, collaboration and close discussion with different potential investors uh, and uh, we we observe great interest from um, big energy companies uh, and uh, we invite other companies to consider this perspective as well so uh, we have two parallel works in, in the field of offshore wind development of roadmap as well as uh, we have started to discuss uh, a realization of uh, projects, business projects in the field of offshore wind. In addition to that, uh, this year we have started cooperation with a German energy agency and uh, DENA, DENA uh, has been supporting us to identify, uh, identify and, and analyze market potential of decentralized renewable energy solutions because this is the, another way in, uh, how we can penetrate the market and how we see small scale applications, which is the, very important because with the support of ADB nowadays, we are working on the net metering procedures and uh, with the support of uh, DENA nowadays, we are developing cases where we, we, we may have, uh, how can I say, uh, more uh, cases that uh, we can use uh, centralized renewable energy solutions and uh, with the support of DENA, uh, four to five uh, cases have been developed and assessed, analyzed, and uh, we believe that uh, within these cases, I can provide uh, some public buildings that which type of renewable energy solution, decentralized renewable energy solutions, could be utilized, etc. Thanks to Dena that uh, within this project and with the help of this project nowadays, uh, we we can see uh, apart from industrial scale projects, in which direction, in which uh, cases that uh, centralized solutions uh, could be considered uh, in order to further uh, utilize the renewable energy potential. And the last one, uh, I would like to mention that uh, we have another very big case regarding the establishment of renewable energy zone in the liberated in areas. Uh, you know that Supreme Commander in Chief, uh, His Excellency uh, President Ilham Aliyev, uh, has declared his vision about uh, seeing green uh, liberated areas as a green energy zone and taking this uh, strategic vision into account. Uh, the Minister of Energy in close cooperation with international and uh, local uh, companies as, as well as state bodies and government units uh, has been analyzing the interna international experience and we have started cooperation with TEPSCO, how we can develop the concept and master plan that uh, to achieve and uh, to, uh, and to achieve and 
to establish, let's say, green energy zone within uh, renewable uh, within the liberated areas. And here, main target is uh, to use uh, clean energy potential of the area to uh, apply energy efficient technologies and modern energy management systems and tools. Uh, and um, you know that this area has been uh, identified as uh, net zero emission uh, zone by 2000. 50 uh, on the sidelines of uh, COP26 event, uh, we have uh, the country has declared uh, its vision about this uh, direction, about this strategic uh, direction. So uh, within this project, uh, we are we have been uh, assessing the potential, and I, I should I should say that the area has great potential in terms of solar and wind and almost with solar wind potential is around seven more than seven gigawatt and we have already started with bp to a, a one industrial project with the capacity of 140 megawatt solar power plant as well as nowadays we have ongoing project uh, ongoing rfi process for 100 megawatt in lachin and Kalbaja region and uh, as I said, uh, in order to achieve an, uh, the establishment of green energy zone, uh, more solar and wind projects to come in the future. And nowadays, uh, with the help of the consulting company, we are uh, assessing the electricity demand in uh, short, medium and long term and how we can uh, achieve and meet this demand uh, with the realization of different types of re, uh, green energy projects. Um, apart from solar and wind, uh, the area has great hydro energy potential and we have around, uh, including Huda, Feren and Gizgalasa, we have around uh, uh, around more than uh, 30 uh, so 300 megawatt, uh, two industrial scale projects, Hudafaran and Gizgalase, uh, are planned to be online, let's say in 2023, uh, 2023 or 2024. Um, and in addition to that, uh, more than 30 uh, hydropower, uh, small hydropower plants are there and needs to be uh, rehabilitated. And nowadays we are working on that direction. All, almost four of uh, three of them ha ha have already been restored with the with the total capacity of 15.7 megawatt, and one is uh, on the restoration nowadays. And al already these small hydropower plants uh, supply uh, green energy to the region. Apart from electricity supply, uh, within this green energy zone uh, concept, different other green technologies are being considered. Mainly, it's about um, installation of rooftop PVs uh, and at massive scale, almost uh, depends on the energy supply scenario. Uh, but uh, we believe that uh, one of the core elements of this green energy zone uh, will be uh, internal production through um, green technologies, internal production of electricity for internal consumption through electricity, of course, subject to the technical potential and te uh, commercial sensitiveness. Uh, in addition to that, uh, within this green energy zone, another one key element is energy efficiency, uh, construction of buildings and uh, in line with energy efficiency requirements, uh, to have energy efficiency culture in other applications in terms of transport, industry, etc. Uh, using electric cars uh, and uh, promoting uh, the usage of electric, uh, electric vehicles uh, in public transport and in private transport, street lighting with solar-based LED bulbs for street lighting and circular economy, waste energy as or waste treatment, uh, waste management. This is another direction that uh, will be considered within the green energy zone. Uh, that's all from my side. I tried uh, to provide uh, the all information that we have uh, regarding the renewable energy uh, sector of the country. But uh, in case you have any questions, in case you need further clarification, I am your at your disposal. Please feel free to ask 
and thank you, uh, German uh, Chamber of uh, Commerce, for organizing this event. And my pleasure to be here and uh, to be with you uh, and uh, talk about the renewable energy sector of the country. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayer, for this um, in depth presentation. I guess it was very interesting and, and relevant figures. Um, I would, uh, without further ado, before maybe we before we take the questions, I may ask uh, Heinrich Leisner from from Notus Energy for some five or seven minutes um, input and and assessment. And after this, uh, we take the questions. I I uh, saw your uh, raising hand, Mr. Oryov, so uh, no one will get lost. So, but first, Mr. Gleisner, please. Hello, good day. My name is Heinrich Gleisner. Uh, at first, I would like to say thanks that NOTUS can take part in this interesting event. I am advisor for the company NOTUS in the Eastern European area and the Baltic States. NOTUS is a medium-sized company in the field of development, construction, financing and operation of wind and solar parks and also active in electricity trading. Uh, NOTUS founded in 2001 by the CFO Heiner Röger and has now 200 employees. Our focus uh, has been in Germany, but we have also projects in France, Bulgaria, Poland, Finland, Kosovo, Mexico, and since 2018 also in Ukraine with three projects over 300 MB. So my comment. As far as I've uh, been able to inform myself beforehand, and as I can now take with me from this event, Azerbaijan is a very interesting country in terms of renewable energies, also for a company like ours, like Notos. The most important question for us as a medium-sized company in countries like Azerbaijan is the question of ensuring the framework conditions for investors and developers. That means in particular the legal as well as the political and of course the financial conditions, their safety and reliability. The investment guarantees, I don't know how it is in the moment with um, Hermes covers and so for Azerbaijan. Um, uh, a question I have too for this, um, uh, for my understanding is this um, renewable energy law when it passed uh, or it's updated that I have not to really understand. But um, what is a important topic for us after our experience in Ost East European states like Bulgaria or um, uh, uh, now also in, in Ukraine um, to find uh, real legal, competent, informative and uh, really named official contact persons in the state sector that a company like Notos can start in a country, yes, because it's um, post-Soviet states with bureaucracy and centralized decision-making culture. It's, uh, it's uh, different to many other countries. That's why this is for us a topic to discuss. Um, the other things I think it's for all companies the same also for a company with who works in the area of renewables. Um, how is the behavior of, um, uh, of, of uh, local uh, authorities and persons you have to work together with uh, the problem with um, um, preparation of, of um, documents and uh, the implementation of approval process and um, how it works such in, in reality. Yes, in, in such meetings it's very easy to speak about, but in reality we have seen a lot of problems, unclear 
social responsibilities and are uncooperative behavior with local authorities, it's, it's a real a problem sometimes. And I hope for Azerbaijan, I, I see that you are very interested to become uh, investors in this area. That's why I mean it's interesting topic for us and for other companies too. And um, I think it's um, a lot of opportunities because uh, when in uh, Azerbaijan, it's uh, not a small country and, uh, and uh, this process um, to change the energy um, into green energy, it's also a topic for such a country like Azerbaijan, I think. Um, for us, for our company, we are really interested how the project, what you named, uh, this uh, uh, master and this aqua uh, project, how it goes further. Yes, they, they signed these contracts and now how is the status of such projects. Um, we are interested in reality for projects from 150 MV and higher because uh, the the efforts, what we have to do, it's for, it's in such a country high, is that why projects have to be not too small, I think. So, uh, that was uh, at first what I can say about uh, Azerbaijan after this uh, uh, what I have heard. I, I, I'm thank to say thank on all participants and maybe question we can speak. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Gleisner, for this first uh, comment. Um, uh, Mr. Amayev, I would suggest we had one other person uh, raising the hand for a question. I, we will take this as well and then we will give the word back to you. Are you fine with that? Okay, we had one, one colleague in the line, uh, Mr. Uruyov. You had a question, so now. Thank you very much, Mr. Uh, Kagebein. I, I hope I pronounced if you can, it correctly. You can, it's, if, if, if Stefan is easier, you can. Ste you can yeah, thank you very much, Stefan, and thank you very much for organizing this meeting. Thank you very much, Mr. Amaya, for a very detailed presentation. I'm from Total Energies, and um, we're also very ambitious about the Azerbaijani market. Um, we stated our interest um, in in high-level meetings, particularly in the meeting with head of state last week, uh, where we said that we will be interested in to invest in renewable energy in Azerbaijan along with our conventional business. Uh, my question is about the auctions, auctions which uh, Mr. Amai mentioned. I'd like to know what will be the, the size of the project that goes to auctions and there is another provision in the law which says it can be negotiated contracts as well. So what, how, how the government will differentiate these two tracks of the projects? Thank you. Thank you very much. I would suggest that we now we have a first round of answers from your side, Mr. Amayev, and then taking the other question. Uh, thank you very much. So let's start uh, with the first uh, question. It's about the renewable energy law. Uh, yes, the law has been adopted, not updated. This is the first time that we have renewable energy law. And in June, uh, July this year, uh, the law has been adopted. Uh, and uh, you can find the law in Azure version online. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I'm not sure whether it, 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 it's an uh, English version there, uh, but Anyhow, uh, you can uh, reach to this document uh, through internet. Now, regarding the contact, regarding coordination, uh, as an agency, we are open for any type of co cooperation discussion. And uh, almost every day, we have uh, meetings with different types of companies and international uh, companies as well as local companies and uh, we can provide contact uh, in that regard in the field uh, regarding the renewable energy uh, sector uh, you can uh, approach to me personally as well as well as uh, we will provide relevant contacts uh, and you can get this contact 
and uh, the, regarding the status of the project with Aqua Power and Master, you know that subject to the investment agreement as well as uh, PPA, we have timeline there and according to the timeline nowadays, different works in terms of funding, in terms of uh, uh, preparation for commissioning, uh, sorry, preparation for uh, starting the start of the construction are being done uh, uh, nowadays. So uh, the projects uh, go well uh, in line with the project timeline and uh, hopefully in near future uh, we will uh, have a groundbreaking ceremony of both projects. Uh, regarding the question uh, by Mr. Orojov, uh, yes, we have two direction and we got, uh, the first auction, the capacity, uh, initial plan is 100 megawatt and we will start with solar one, uh, but this is indicative capacity for now. So we don't plan to go with uh, the big capacity like 200 uh, or more, you know that uh, big capacity it means that uh, it is a little bit uh, good to achieve scale, to be in line with the regulated tariff, etc. But the plan is uh, to further uh, support involvement of medium scale, uh, medium companies, medium scale companies. Uh, we would like to go with 100 megawatt. Of course, 100 megawatt has low impact, low grid impact rather than 240 or 230 megawatt. But uh, the idea is to use uh, land uh, efficiently and to have, let's say, uh, around 100 megawatt. But this is, for now, this is indicative capacity. Nowadays, we are assessing different uh, options in that direction. Uh, regarding uh, the second direction, uh, bilateral negotiation, of course, uh, bilateral negotiation is something different. In, the, in that direction, developer or potential investor uh, can identify uh, the land uh, on its own and come, uh, come up with proposal that we have assessed, we have initial assessment. But for auction, uh, Minister of Energy or uh, state agency will provide the land. So we will provide the land and the competition will be on specific one land. So it is like uh, to get a commercial proposal regarding one project, dedicated area and initial feasibility and initial information about uh, the area. But for another direction, uh, let's say uh, potential investor uh, investors have independence and they can identify area come back with the proposal even uh, they if they have special uh, off take agreement with uh, private sector or private consumer as well because uh, sometimes uh, they can they come up with uh, different types of framework how to uh, uh, sell the uh, product sell the production, let's say. That's why uh, the main difference, uh, as I mentioned, uh, regarding the area, regarding uh, approach and regarding overall framework. Thank you very much for the answers. So we have uh, five more people in the line with, with questions. So let's start with uh, Farid Izayev. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan. And uh, Mr. Amayev, Tabriz Ma'alim, good afternoon. My name is Farid Esayev. I'm the chairman of the board at German Azerbaijan and Chamber of Commerce. Uh, and my other role uh, uh, relates to my work at the KPMG in Baku office. Uh, so very insightful, very interesting presentation. Uh, I also follow uh, uh, the information that is available uh, in media, in public sources. So uh, just using this opportunity, would like to clarify with you some matters. First, as I understand, uh, the projects that have been uh, mentioned today, uh, they are done on the base of a PPP model, right? Public uh, par uh, private partnership. Uh, in that regard, my first question is um, uh, currently there is one model uh, that is uh, uh, stipulated in legislation, the BOT model. Uh, and uh, that, of course, defines certain framework. And most importantly, uh, it uh, envisions the transfer of uh, uh, the transfer of facilities at the end of the uh, uh, period. So the question is, 
uh, do you consider other PPP models as uh, valid alternatives to BOT model that currently is in legislation? If so, uh, uh, is it uh, typically uh, negotiated separately or uh, we should expect some uh, changes in legislation to expand the list of PPP models? And the second uh, concerns uh, uh, the uh, tariffs and the commercial structure. Um, so, uh, of course, we know um, uh, the uh, regulation of this uh, sector and we know certain uh, uh, restraints uh, in relation to the tariffs and there are good reasons for that. So, uh, are the investors also uh, allowed or encouraged uh, to look at the uh, export of energy uh, in addition to uh, orientation to the external local market? or, or uh, export of uh, this energy is reserved uh, for uh, government companies. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Farid Bey. Uh, regarding the first question, uh, yes, these projects are PPP projects and investment guarantee, 20 years, standard 20 years uh, of take agreement, take or pay terms. Uh, yes, and we consider, uh, of course, it depends on the technical and commercial sensitiveness of the projects. Different types of uh, PPP models could be considered, but again, uh, it's really hard to say that definitely we will consider. Of course, uh, subject to the successful realization of the projects, uh, let's say successful realization of the projects with uh, Aqua Power, Master, BP, we will see how the existing model works. Of course, uh, we know that in international practice, we have lots of uh, options that we can consider. Uh, and according to our legislation as well, uh, that which option we have. Uh, but uh, again, we can't nowadays say that we have only one option. Again, depends on the project, depends on the other factors around the projects and, uh, and subject to the further negotiation, I can say. Uh, regarding the commercial tariffs, uh, that's another very interesting question and sometimes uh, personally myself I struggle to answer uh, th this question. Of course, uh, we, uh, how can I say, uh, of course, sometimes to make uh, the project more com commercial feasible, a developer, uh, that they came up with the proposal to sell some parts of the production to the private sector, they so consider export uh, opportunities as well. Uh, we have been receiving this type of uh, offers, this type of proposals. Uh, of course, uh, we, these options could be considered. We consider it definitely. Even some uh, companies uh, up until now came up with their solution about that. They will uh, change the electricity to the hydrogen ones, they consider exporting hydrogen and of course they need to consult with relevant uh, other stakeholders, uh, grid operator or pipeline operator, etc. Uh, as time being, uh, I, I can't say that uh, this option uh, is not allowed. Of course, we need to consider this one and as, as I said, we have a huge potential in offshore even if you use 10% of this one, this is enough for the country. That's why in case we are going to utilize this potential, we need to think about the export, export one. Thank you very much. Uh, I guess the export uh, uh, topic will be crucial in the next years, since you have a look on how, how much energy Germany is needed in the respective industries. Uh, um, I guess every, every each gigawatt is, is needed, at least in Germany. Uh, other countries uh, will have the same demand, but uh, now we are here in a German Azerbaijani context. So export topic is very, very crucial for the future. So next question from uh, Ruslan Gafarov, please. Good afternoon all. Do you hear me well? Yeah, we can hear you, yeah. If you, yeah. If you would uh, like, you can enable your video. If not, it's not a problem, but we can hear you well. Unfortunately, no camera. Uh, my name is Ruslan Gaparov. I'm the co-founder of the Green Air Startup. So first of all, thank you very much for having this session about the renewable energy development in Azerbaijan. I have uh, three questions to the Mr. Amai. It's there short. So we'd like to hear um, uh, the update about the biofuel and bioenergy development, bioenergy development in Azerbaijan. 
My second question will be, does the Azerbaijan government only consider to utilize the renewable, uh, conventional type of renewable energy projects? Or we can we also pursue the, the cutting edge, edge technology like the bladeless wind turbines or vertical axis wind turbines or transparent solar PVs? And my third question will be specifically for our company. Does the Azerbaijan government consider the products which can provide the independent energy sources for off-grid area? Thank you very much. Excuse me, could you please uh, repeat the third question? Third question, does the Azerbaijan government, I mean the B2G sector, consider the product which can provide the independent energy sources for off-grid areas. So they, they are working on the renewable energy principles. Okay, let's start the first one Thank regarding you. bioenergy and biofuel. Uh, and you, as you said, uh, sometimes we call solar and wind like conventional renewable energy. Of course, as you have seen from the slides, uh, the first slide about the renewable energy potential, and uh, and the mainly solar and wind, and uh, we we believe that not only in our country, worldwide, uh, solar and wind. Uh, of course, we have uh, we can uh, we can't exclude hydro one as well. Uh, yes, mainly we consider uh, industrial scale projects with solar and wind, but it doesn't say that uh, bio is somehow uh, let's say. Second option, of course not. Uh, depends. Uh, sometimes we have been receiving some proposals regarding bio as well. Uh, not big uh, capacity, but uh, around 20, 30 megawatt capacity. But uh, again, uh, this is our uh, agenda, and we consider this perspective as well. Uh, in case of any proposal, any business idea, we, we are ready to sit and discuss. Uh, biofuel as well, as you know, that uh, within the national priority nowadays, we have been working on the development of social economic development strategy. There we consider, uh, let's say, uh, alternate, uh, let's say, fuels, alternative fuels for uh, transport sector and in that direction I believe that biofuel and the other uh, bioproducts let's say uh, bioenergy uh, will be considered regarding uh, the second question uh, I think I have already covered the second one though I guess uh, it's about high-tech technologies bladeless wind turbines yeah uh, that's correct. There's a special uh, yes, program thank or you very much. Uh, all these type of high-tech technologies are being considered within green energy zone and the liberated areas. There we believe that uh, we'll use, uh, let's say, results of high technological development and, and we consider application of different high-tech renewable energy solutions and uh, and uh, this is the another direction in case any local company or international company that they have some proposal we are ready because it's very important for us to see of course definitely uh, every day almost every day uh, we are exploring let's say uh, technological development in the field of green energy but any proposal from your side, uh, you are more than welcome, and that would be our pleasure to see uh, and to understand your view in that direction. Definitely, not only within green energy zone, uh, but we will start with that area. But we will use the same experience across the country, and you know that green energy space as a national priority, as strategic objective, this is not just for liberated areas, for the whole country. Uh, regarding the B2G model, regarding independent pr pr production, we, we are considering this perspective as well, but this is at our analysis, our, let's say, view and assessment at infant stage, uh, and we are trying to understand overall the framework, and we are trying uh, to, that's why with other agencies, and, uh, with the support of international organizations, we are considering different options that how we can uh, 
further facilitate the deployment of renewable energy at small scale as well, not with just industrial scale projects. Uh, uh, we have good proverb that uh, drop drop we can make like uh, the same that that's why we are uh, considering this perspective as well. Thank you, Thank you very much, so Mr. Maithia. A bit over the time, so two people are left here with questions. So I would suggest that we take uh, Tiavush Azakov and Knut Elend Roswold for the last two questions. Please try to uh, keep your questions short and uh, not to stretch, uh, stretch the time of Mr. Maith uh, too much. So please, uh, Mr. Azakov first. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, I also would like to thank uh, Mr. Amai for very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, my question is somehow related to uh, what uh, Mr. Bauman mentioned in his presentation about hydrogen, uh, uh, hydrogen uh, production, and especially we know that the main competition now uh, is for so-called green uh, hydrogen. And if we take into account uh, the uh, facts that our neighbors, uh, uh, countries like Russia and uh, Kazakhstan, now also do quite uh, important steps uh, in this respect. Uh, for example, I uh, know that now uh, Germany uh, intensively negotiate with uh, uh, Kazakhstan about uh, production of uh, green uh, hydrogen, about $10 billion, uh, uh, Germany is ready to invest. And uh, uh, so in this case, uh, uh, what Azerbaijan uh, does uh, and uh, is some program under preparation uh, uh, because uh, we also have these pipelines and uh, probably in future hydrogen could be uh, transferred to Europe. Uh, so, do you know if uh, government uh, thinks about that and uh, what we will, could expect in the nearest future? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alakov. Uh, and shall we take the last question from Mr. Roswald? Okay. If you don't mind. Yes. Uh, thank you very much for this. Um, I'm uh, representing Provitas um, in this meeting. Um, well, um, Function Energy is a Norwegian company. I'm uh, working with so in solar energy and we're very interested about uh, Azerbaijan and the potential expansion. Of course, I've been there now almost 10 years in the solar energy sector, uh, starting with almost nothing to a place where actually business is growing. And at this point, we are experiencing the problem of skilled labor. Uh, now, the biggest problem I think in Azerbaijan is to get enough people, skilled labor, um, skilled electricians, skilled workers to actually do this uh, installation in a in a good way. This is a big, big challenge right now, and it should also be addressed in parallel with all these amazing projects. If not, uh, you will have a graveyard of, uh, of power stations uh, within a decade. So uh, how are you addressing this? Thank you very much. Uh, let's start with hydrogen question and later on I will uh, try to provide my view regarding this skill shortage or overall skill development capacity building. In terms of hydrogen, yes, uh, we have recently started to analyze assess the market potential. You know that in order to have industry in place, we, we need to first start to analyze the local demand as well as uh, export infrastructure, etc. So I'm, I will try to talk about the green hydrogen one, but anyhow, uh, blue is uh, in our uh, uh, consideration as well, and our consideration as well. And we have uh, internal, not internal, intergovernmental. Uh, the working group consists of different government bodies. Nowadays, we are assessing this potential and trying to identify export potential as well as pilot projects and the local demand as well. So uh, hydrogen uh, is under consideration, of course, under consideration. And you know that Sokar as a state oil company uh, uh, has been assessing uh, the potential of the existing pipeline infrastructure about blending options and which uh, part of the capacity could be used for hydrogen, uh, uh, exporting for uh, exporting of uh, hydrogen. 
And uh, in regarding the Renewable Energy Agency, we are uh, doing our work in, diff in different lines. First of all, we are nowadays exploring the international practice, best practice, learning the experience of different companies as well as German companies as well. Sometimes we are uh, holding some seminars, etc. as well as um, in addition to that, uh, as I said, uh, nowadays, so uh, subject to the approval of sp specific gates uh, and uh, procedures, uh, let's say, well, we are almost about to start uh, the study about the assessment of hydrogen potential of the, of the country. And with IFC, uh, this is the, another topic uh, regarding the utilization of offshore wind potential. So overall, hydrogen perspective at this infant stage, but the speed is good that we believe that in line with overall development, global development, worldwide development, uh, we will use this potential as well. We have enough uh, capacity in terms of, as I said, export infrastructure that we can uh, not only produce hydrogen for local demand as well as export and this one, which will further support the utilization of uh, spare capacity of the pipelines, of course, gas pipelines. Regarding skill shortage, uh, yes, this is another issue and I think key component. And in case we have potential, we should have potential for human capital as well, human potential. Uh, recently, you know that BP and uh, Minister of uh, Education uh, have signed a MOU regarding the study abroad uh, of uh, Azerbaijani use uh, in order to learn and to have degree in the field of uh, renewable energy. And uh, as, as an agency, we are cooperate. We have been cooperating with uh, different uh, high schools or let's say universities. And nowadays, I, I believe that three or four universities is that they are considering to open special degree program and for the, for these purposes, uh, as well as some vocational schools they consider uh, to train uh, uh, electricians and other, uh, let's say, even how we call it, roofers, yes, roofers, yes, uh, in the future that. Uh, who we, roofers is who is in charge of uh, rooftop PV install, installation, something like that, uh, that they consider this perspective as well. Uh, but mainly, I believe that um, in order to uh, achieve successful realization of any type of projects with the involvement or private sector, as well as some, I don't know, state-sponsored uh, green energy projects, we, uh, we, we should bear in mind that <clears throat> skill uh, to have local content and to have national content in terms of human capital, local labor uh, resources is key element. And uh, we are, uh, we have been working in that direction, but uh, I believe that for the support from, let's say business community, as well as educational universities, uh, uh, universities are required. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayev. So you're a bit over. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Can you please? Can I quickly I comment? That? Yeah, yeah, I don't know how how, how much time Mr. Mayev has. So if, if he has already some minutes, it's fine. Yes, so okay. Is... No problem. Okay, okay, okay. Please. Yeah, just a big uh, wish from our side. It's a vocational training that you really, really look on vocational training. That's where you have the gap. It's vocational training. Like we have a lot of skilled people that know a lot of stuff, but we need people that can do the uh, the works. So this is really, really my wish. And I think Germany has excellent system for vocational training that you can learn a lot from. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Uh, Erland, uh, you are in this industry, especially in Azerbaijan, more than me, and you know almost gaps, etc. And thank you for your feedback and recommendation. Hereby, I kindly ask uh, our colleagues here, our friends here, uh, let's have another discussion about the vocational training and cooperation with the relevant uh, units about how we can uh, achieve synergy in this field. We would like to learn uh, German experience in the field of renewable energy vocational training. Thank you, Mr. Erland, the good recommendation.
uh, thank you very much, uh, first of all, Mr. Mayev, Mr. Gleisner, and of course all participants for, on the one hand, a very sound and deep presentation of the current status, since your agency is rather a young one, uh, more or less a year. Uh, you have a very, very huge package of work uh, uh, in front of you. Uh, you, can, you can see it or you, you can see it here in the discussion. Very different uh, topics from regulation to skilled labor force, uh, to off takers and so on and so forth. Uh, but having this agency, is, I guess, is, is a good news because you have um, uh, investors, companies, partners have a, a single window to uh, where they know whom to approach for questions and for further discussions. So I guess that is very important and not to lose time in searching for the right person to talk with. I guess that's the, the main message, I guess, we have today. And uh, therefore, I would like to thank you for your time. Uh, if you don't mind, and if, if you have your consent, we will share the presentation you showed today uh, so that the people can, can have this uh, information and your contact details as well. And I guess some questions are left regarding uh, the qualified workforce and how to tackle this topic. I guess AHK is in this field very active uh, and other um, 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 uh, things to, to become. Um, before I would like to close the session, maybe Mr. Baumann, you want to share the last word? You would like to? I hope it's not my very last words, but uh, thank you very much indeed for this very well valuable input. Uh, we've seen a, a, a big progress, I think, in renewables uh, over the last three years. Also now with a new law in in um, uh, operative, and uh, in so far I'm quite optimistic that we will see some development. So uh, many desires, and not everything is uh, fulfillable at the moment. But uh, I see progress, and that is, uh, I would say, the the um, the good news out of today's session. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And for those who celebrate Christmas, have a nice Christmas time. And if you don't, if you don't shouldn't see uh, until this, uh, good good start to 2022. Okay. Bye. Thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye. Thank you. 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 Thank you